Fans of the New York Mets have been down for a while. There are only seven teams with a longer World Series championship drought than the Metropolitans, who haven't won since 1986 off of the miracle Game 6 Buckner error, and they went on to win Game 7 at home. Since then, they fell in 2000 to the uh, other team in New York and lost in only five games, two by blowout, to the two-year window Royals in 2015. Since that loss, the Mets have just two second place NL East finishes and lost in the NL wildcard both of those years. With a change of ownership from the Ponzi scheme Will Ponds to Steve Cohen, a billionaire with money being given out to aging stars like candy to kids on Halloween, with big deals last season to Max Scherzer and Justin Verlander, MLB The Show 24 franchise this year, we are going to take Steve Cohen's money. We are going to get this team out of this useless spending spree and do it right so that the Mets fans can experience something that they haven't in 37 years. Euphoria. Welcome to the New York Mets franchise on MLB The Show 24. Anxious to get this started, but I will say, if you don't like this choice this year, number one, oh well, too bad, too sad. And number two, there will be another franchise mode over on my new MLB The Show channel, Moneyball Maniac. So go check that out if you haven't already. Kodai Sanga is going to be the ace of the staff at 86 overall. He has some nasty movement on his pitches and is solid even if I'd like to see him cut down on some walks. Zanga's coming off a 2.98 ERA season and a 3.4 war for his first year in the bigs, and he's signed for four more seasons. The 2023 All-Star is a solid piece and here to stay. Jose Quintana is just a stopgap at this point in his career. He's 35 years old and had a decent year for the Mets last year, but he's only signed for one year and he's far from his 2016 All-Star days. Sean Manaya was a bit of a panic signing. He hasn't pitched at a great level since his days in Oakland, and two years 14 mil per is too much for me, but we'll likely ride it out or trade him next year. David Peterson is someone I have some hopes for. He's been super inconsistent with alternating good and bad seasons, but he's due for a good one now, and he's under team control for two more years after the first year. Luis Severino was another stopgap signing. The 30-year-old two-time All-Star has been declining for a bit due to injuries, and the Mets just brought him in to be a decent fifth starter with potential to catch lightning in a bottle if he reclaims his old form. The bullpen will hold starter Adrian Hauser as a long reliever, and he has had some good velocity and movement, but the control just isn't there, and it shows with him putting up slightly above average numbers. He's due to be a free agent, so it might be his lone year with us. Phil Bickford is 28 years old, but he really doesn't have anything special about him, and his painfully mediocre ERA shows that. But he's under team control through 2027, so that may provide us a little bit of value. Jorge Lopez is an interesting player. He's rated 77, and he has excellent velocity, good movement, and decent enough control. But he's only had one positive war season over the last five, and he's due to hit the market, so the former All-Star could be a deadline sell piece. Austin Adams awful control leads to many walks and gets him in trouble. He's put up painfully mediocre numbers, but will likely be around through his final arbitration year next season. Adam Adovino has been a very renowned bullpen arm for many years now, but he's 38 and this is likely his last year with the club. Brooks Raley will take the setup role due to that pitch clutch rating and his nasty stuff despite a lower velo. He's put up two great years back to back out of the pen and we hope he can continues that right through 2025, which is his last arbitration season. And finally, the closer, Edwin Diaz. One of the best closers in baseball, despite the fact that he missed last season, but he's excellent and signed through 2028 at the age of 35. He's likely this team's closer all the way until that age 35 season, especially with the really cool cutscene. Why mess with this cutscene? It's beautiful. Some guys you can expect to see, hopefully soon, or maybe very soon due to injury or trade, are guys like Jose Buto, who is 26 years old and he did some solid work for the Mets last year. He definitely needs to work on his control and giving up those walks, but the foundation is there to have a buildable player either to spot start or long relief, and he's under team control through 2030. Mike Vassell's 24, but as of now, he's really just a velo pitcher who will get some Ks and eat some innings for you, but another guy who's under team control for a while, and he could see the majors. 
Lastly, it's Matt Allen, who is just 22 and under team control through 2029, but he's definitely going to need control help to keep those walks down. Another velocity warrior. Let's move on to the lineup for now. First up, it is Jeff McNeil, who is a tremendous contact hitter, but has had next to no pop since 2019. But he's a great average hitter and solid defender, giving him a nice war. But I still wouldn't have paid a 32-year-old $12.5 million a year for four seasons. But it shouldn't be too bad to ride the two-time All-Star and former Silver Slugger and batting title winner's contract right on out of here. Darling Marte, however, he's apparently declining fast according to the game. He's had major injury issues, but his only average season was last year, and he still has two more at $19.5 million each, so his contract won't really be attractive to anyone. We'll have to see the two-time Gold Glover and two-time All-Star through his contract. Brandon Nimmo, fan favorite and most recent overpay by Steve Cohen. I love Nimmo myself. He has enough pop, hits for enough average, and plays enough defense to have a very solid war, three years running now. But 20.2 million for the next seven years is absolutely insane, and his contract is completely immovable. Pete Alonso is the ultimate question mark on the team. He's one of the best power hitters in all of baseball and has been for each of his first five years in the main. Majors. And this is going to piss some of you Mets fans off, but I don't think we're paying him unless it's a shorter term contract. The former Rookie of the Year and Home Run Champ has been a fun two-time Home Run Derby winner and a shoe-in for some Silver Sluggers, but I like building my teams a touch differently. Frankie Lindor, once my favorite player in all of baseball, and even I wouldn't have given him the astronomical contract Mr. Cohen did, as he's going to end up having to be here for a while, $34 million over the next eight years for a guy that is just starting to find his footing in the city. I hope it keeps up because the once four times straight all-star hasn't been one since 2019. Catcher Francisco Alvarez is the exact kind of player that I want to build around. A catcher that plays the solid defense that he does and has 25 plus homer pop is very valuable and not something that I want leaving City Field. He's going to be getting a long-term contract as early as it makes sense for us to do so and you can bet on that. Ronnie Mauricio is going to DH against righties, and he'll be a Rookie of the Year contender, I hope. It's time for the 23-year-old to come up and see what he can do full-time after hitting 248 in limited games last season in his first Major League action. I'm excited for the young man. Tyrone Taylor is platooning at center field, which is a spot the Mets have struggled filling since Carlos Beltran left, and he'll be platooning with Harrison Bader, but Taylor's the better option against righties, and he still has two years of arbitration, so if he plays well, he could keep coming back. Brett Beatty was brought up maybe a little too early by the Mets, and he just wasn't good last year in his first full Major League season. Negative 1.8 war is a yikes, and now we're gonna have to develop him. At least he's cheap and he's under team control for a while. Against lefties, Harrison Bader will get his chance. He's one of the few players who is solid against lefties, and he plays excellent defense, which fuels his above-average war. But he's on a one-year deal, so he's likely gone or another deadline selling piece. Joey Wendell is going to play some against lefties with his solid defense and plate vision. He's not great, but rather painfully average, but it's worth a start or two when Beatty isn't much better right now. Now, if Beatty does well, then he's like likely going to end up starting against righties and lefties, and Wendell can just back him up. Bench guys include DJ Stord, who will provide some pop against right-handed pitching with a solid arm in the outfield, but the ship has sailed on him being any type of long-term player for this franchise. Trace Thompson can provide pop against either righties or lefties off the bench, but again, nothing long-term for a player here. Backup catcher is Mets longtime backup catcher Thomas Nito, who has been with the club since 2017, and he's been average at best, but he's cheap for two more seasons. Now, guys that we could see coming up and helping out are Ben Gamble, who obviously has major league experience, though the skills have diminished quite a bit steadily. Omar Narvaez was paid $7.5 million to join the club. Club, but I felt Nito provided more at the plate and defensively combined, but if Nito isn't getting it done, Narvaez will be in an option. Or if somebody needs a backup catcher, we can trade for a prospect. G-Man Choi is a nice power guy against righties, and he's very disciplined and clutch. 
it's a solid bench opportunity or back half of the year starter if we're a bad team and we trade Pete Alonso. Luke Voigt, the COVID year home run king, still has some pop and he could also be the option should Alonso get shipped for prospects. Some prospects that we are looking forward to seeing in the next couple of seasons are guys like center fielder Drew Gilbert. As soon as this 53rd ranked prospect in baseball is ready at the plate, he's probably going to be our starting major league center fielder. But he's not on the 40 man yet, just in case. Luis Angel Acuna is Ronald Acuna's little brother who was brought in from the Rangers for Max Scherzer. I would love to develop him into a solid major league starter so that he and his brother could have an in-division rivalry for years to come. The 66th ranked prospect on MLB.com is not far off at the plate, but the defense needs some work if he's going to be a shortstop. Our other shortstop option is Jet Williams. He is the top prospect in our organization, and he's further along on his defense, and he has nice speed. But it's his hitting that needs work. There's still a lot of hope for the 45th ranked prospect in all of baseball. Before we move on, I do have two prospects to show off. Shout out to channel members who have stuck through supporting with their hard-earned money, even through my, well, more than a little bit of a break. First one goes out to Derek and his prospect, Russ Wilson, at relief pitcher. Wilson has a ton of movement, but he has way more to learn, and at 20 years of age, he has the time to develop. Second is to my homie, Raider Bayer Conics, and his prospect, Camacho Rollins, at left field. Rollins from Australia is just 18 years old, and he's got a lot of pop in his back already. He needs to develop discipline at the plate and get some contact, but if he does, he could be a wild hitter at the major league level. I did say multiple times that the Mets have overspent and we are already over our budget. This means that we're going to be paying close attention to how players are playing and making deals of the deadline accordingly, maybe even a little before the deadline if we need to. You guys should know by now that I am big on drafts and I love taking our drafted players and involving them heavily in our franchises, so we need the scouts to be able to get that done. I will have Edmund Fernandez to scout both position players and pitchers with efficiency, Jimmy Barney to scout and and discover pitchers with efficiency, and Rob Cervone to scout and discover position players with efficiency. I'm hoping that well-rounded scouting works out for us. EPI, or Prospect Promotion Incentive, is new to the game this year, and you can get a draft pick if your players get promoted and play well. We have a shot with Alvarez and Beatty this season. I don't plan on bringing the rest up this season, though. This game has us ranked 12th in the majors, which basically says that they're projecting us for a wild card appearance, which I do think is sort of realistic, but I think the floor is much lower. We will open the season at home at City Field against the Milwaukee Brewers. Hello everybody and welcome to opening day of the New York Mets franchise on MLB The Show 24 at City Field. Beautiful sunset going down in Queens, New York as the New York Mets will play host to the Milwaukee Brewers today. This should be a great matchup. Tyrone Taylor getting to go up against his former club, of course, traded to the Mets in 2023. We get our jet flyover and we're ready to go. Here's your 2024 preseason projections for this Mets team. Obviously, Jeff McNeil, Pete Alonzo, and Frankie Lindor set to lead this club into the future. Starling Marte projected to steal about 30 bases, and Kodai Senga will be the ace. He has taken the mound a 2.98 ERA last season. He's looking to build off a great year, and the very first plate appearance for Christian Yelich is in the glove of Brandon Nimmo. Here's Sal Freelick, and that's in the glove of Jeff McNeil. William Contreras comes up, and that's a dribbler over to McNeil, who will throw on to Alonzo and get through that first inning. That brings in Freddie Peralta to the mound, 12-10 and 10 on his season last year with a 3.86 ERA and a 112 whip facing Jeff McNeil, the leadoff hitter for the Mets. This one is up the middle and cannot make the play as Willie Adamas. That will be a base hit for Jeff McNeil. Starling Marte swings and misses at a slider down low. Pass ball, Contreras able to pick it up, but it's a strikeout. Here's Brandon Nimmo, and Nimmo gets a good piece of a four-seamer out to right center field all the way up against the wall. Nimmo finds himself at second, and the RBI is safe at home with Jeff McNeil. Pete Alonso and the Polar Bear in a contract year comes up to the plate and yoinks one into left field. The first homer at City Field for this season belongs to Polar Bear Pete. 
His first of the year traveling 440. That's huge for his contract negotiations. Again, I mentioned I don't plan to bring him back, but we'll see. He might force our hand. Here's Frankie Lindor with a little dribbler over to second base, and he is the second out of the inning. Francisco Alvarez, the young catcher, takes one the other way into right field. That one is at the warning track and caught to end the first. Willie Adamas goes down, swinging Kodai Senga. Starting his game very well. Here's Jake Bowers, and he gets him looking on a 97-mile-an-hour heater. Bringing up Reese Hoskins, who will go ahead and foul this one. Alvarez underneath it will make the play to get through the middle of the second. Ronnie Mauricio's first plate appearance is past third base, and a base hit. The young second baseman converted shortstop, making some... Good hits early in the season. Here's Jeff McNeil out to left field, and that is caught to end the second inning as nothing comes across. Jackson Churio, the number one prospect in all of baseball, swinging and missing. Kodai Senga making quick work. Here's Andrew Monasterio, and that's an embarrassing fly ball into foul territory. Bryce Tarang comes up right over to Beatty, who will throw on to first, and Senga really rolling through the Milwaukee lineup. He goes to the top of the fourth, gets Freelich to swing free and miss with his fourth strikeout. So through the middle of the fourth, Mets up three zip. There's Adamas just sitting there looking at a slider down low for the fifth Senga strikeout. Here's Bowers swinging and missing at the fork ball down low. Make it six for the Japanese star. Here's Reese Hoskins swinging and missing at the cutter up high. And the Mets looking good in game number one. Brett Beatty taking one the other way out to left. This one's going all the way to the corner out in left field. And Brett Beatty will be in at second with a double. Jeff McNeil trying to bring him home. He'll get a base hit out and right. But Beatty going to hold up and go back to third. Probably could have taken a chance there. Is it a mistake? Well, it is. Starling Marte grounding into a double play. He's had not a very good game so far. As Peralta gets through five, here's Monasterio and Beatty reaching out to grab it. He makes a nice glove on it, but he cannot throw him out in time. So there's your first base hit of the ball game for Milwaukee. As Senga's... No, no, perfect game bid goes down with both a hit and a walk in this inning. Two on, one away for Yelich, who grounds one over to Lindor. Thrown on to second and back to first, but safe at first base. So just one out there, and Freelick able to hit it right through the middle for the first run of the game for the Brew Crew. William Contreras grounding one over to Lindor, and Lindor calmly gets it on to Alonzo to get through the middle of the sixth, and Wade Miley will come in in relief for the Brewers. 3-14 ERA, 114 whip last season on a 9-4 record. Brandon Nimmo digs in, and he will get a base hit into center field right off of Miley right away. Putting one on first for the Polar Bear, who takes one the other way into right field. That one is fair. And the Polar Bear has himself a base hit. That will get Nimmo over to third. Here's Lindor dribbling one on to third. That is a double play RBI. You don't see many of those too often, a 5-4-3 double play. But it is four to one Mets, and Alvarez will swing and miss to end the sixth inning. Into the seventh we go, and it's Jorge Lopez. Six and two record last season on a not too good 5-9-5 five 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 ERA. And here's a hit for Willie Adamas. Gets it into right field as Marte will throw it calmly to second. Here's Jake Bowers. Bowers up high. McNeil getting underneath it, and he will make the grab out number one. In the top of the seventh inning, here's Reese Hoskins swinging and missing. He goes down, Lopez, one strikeout. Here's Jackson Chirio. He takes it right to center. And the man that he replaced, Tyrone Taylor, will glove him out. Into the next inning, top of the eighth, and Tarang able to get a hit off of Beatty's glove 
Sal Freelick now right to Beatty, and he will throw that calmly on to first to get through the middle of the eighth. We're going to the ninth. After this bottom of the eighth inning where Starling Marte gets his first hit of the season. Great to see because he was having an awful game before then. Nimmo will strike out, however, and with two gone, Polar Bear gloved by Monasterio. What a play by Andrew Monasterio. And now you know what time it is. It is Diaz time as he is ready to take the hill, try to close this thing out. 32 of 35 saves his last played season, which was 2022. Didn't play all of last year, and he faces Contreras for his first batter at 24, and he will get the hit. Maybe a little rust for Edwin Diaz. Hopefully he picks it up. Here's Adamas swinging and missing on the slider. He's had a rough night. One for four now. Here's Jake Bowers 0 for three on the day, but he gets it past the glove of Polar Bear Pete. And two base hits in the ninth off of Edwin Diaz. Here's Reese Hoskins swinging and missing at the slider away. The slider has been working a little bit better for Diaz tonight. There's Churio right into the glove of Polar Bear Pete Alonzo. And the New York Mets will take an opening day victory by a score of 4-1 to one at City Field. Love to see it. The home fans are loving it. Senga gets the win. Edwin Diaz gets the save. And they saddle Peralta with the loss. You can see some of the big hitters here. Alonzo, two for four, as well as Nimmo and McNeil. I am excited to kick this franchise off. Hopefully you guys are too. Thank you guys for joining me. Let me know what you think of the selection. And again, do not forget to go check out Moneyball Maniac. There will be plenty more MLB The Show going on. We are going to move quickly with this franchise. I want to get through a lot of seasons. Thank you all. Have a good one.